In case you haven't seen them, these are the RBH SVTR towers. And I've reviewed these for Audioholics and these have been one of my reference pair of speakers ever since. And what makes these guys so special is you have a monitor tower here on top. So you have three woofers and the base module down here. This is actually the RBH reference subwoofer. These are bolted together with a steel plate. That how it keeps keeps everything uh, cushioned and uh, keeps everything taut. So that's what you see. What electronics am I running here? Well, let me tell you how I have this set up. So my main driver here in the theater room with the RBH is I'm running a Denon 8500 HA AVR. I'm running the front channels here with a monoprice monolith 200 watt per channel uh, multi-channel amplifier. And right now I have the subwoofer module crossed over to RBH's monoblock class D amplifiers. So I have the Denon feeding the subwoofer and LFE channels directly to those amps and I'm feeding it there and I'm crossing everything over in the AVR. Well, you're talking about almost a hundred pounds for each module. So my recollection is it weighs in at somewhere in the neighborhood of around 205, 220 uh, pounds or so. So once you got them in place, you clearly don't want to move them. This is actually a ported speaker design and you don't know that by looking at it. The port is actually underneath on the bottom of the cabinet. The baffle is 38 millimeters thick and the rest of the cabinet is 24 millimeters thick. The tower reference is made up of RBH's SV831R monitor and SV1212NR subwoofer. N means non-powered and R means reference. So yeah, it, it's a ported speaker design. You do not have any of uh, the issues in terms of chuffing or anything else. This is just an incredibly well-designed speaker that performs at the highest level. Uh, first of all, this is absolutely a reference grade speaker. And even though it is composed of both the monitor and the subwoofer module, this is completely coherent. You're talking about uh, high quality crossover. You cannot differentiate. Everything is really properly phase aligned. It measures exceptionally well in a room. And top to bottom, you have uh, incredibly clear mid-range uh, finesse up at the top without being overly harsh or bright. And of course, uh, you know, one thing that just can't be described, it has to be felt and experienced, is the visceral bass that comes out of the speaker. If you are the type of person who really loves clarity, mid-range, how's the mid-range? Well, let me tell you, uh, a 4.72 by one inch AMT tweeter makes an astounding difference in a speaker's performance. And that's really designed for high performance speakers. And that's what you get here. The transient response is incredibly fast, quick, articulate, detailed, and you get incredible sound staging. And then the high quality drivers here that each span their own frequency range are meticulously crossed over. Uh, this is just an incredibly coherent speaker that will satisfy even the most ardent audiophile. If you can do music really well, you can do movies exceptionally well. And that goes without saying here. Um, Shane, who's behind the camera, we sat down and we listened to the RBHs for both music and movies. And I will tell you, at one point, Sh uh, Shane says to me, uh, do you have anything in the seats? Said so, no, that's just the RBHs. That's the the visceral power coming out of them. So, just really incredible for home theater and a real reference. Without question, it has to be the bass. Uh, this is a speaker that has to be experienced to be understood. You're talking about a reference subwoofer that is a part of this speaker. And the bass output that comes out of here is unlike anything I've ever experienced in any other tower speaker. 
Well, I haven't done it yet, but one thing I will tell you is you can sand load it. So I'm waiting for Shane, who's RBH's speaker designer to come here. We're gonna pop the cabinet open on the back and we're gonna load this with 75 pounds of sand, which is supposed to be able to improve the performance even more. So that's a pretty cool feature. Other than uh, sand loading them, which I'm looking forward to do, I have done one thing. So these are the feet that come with the SVTRs. And if you can get an understanding, these are a couple of pounds each to be able to carry the weight. But the one thing I did do is I actually added isoacoustics isolators onto the bottom of the SVTRs. And by my estimation, I did notice, uh, I noticed a little bit of an improvement um, in the sound quality. So that's the mod that I've done. It's actually the grills. So the grills come in two different sets. And I just wish that RBH made a single grill to cover the whole front. So if I have one thing to nitpick about, that's it. Otherwise, really fantastic speaker. The RBH SVTR, this unit that you're seeing here, again, is an incredibly well-designed, articulate, uh, full-range speaker. And when I tell you full range, you do not need a subwoofer with these. And in fact, on the back, you can disconnect the um, cable to connect the top and the bottom module. There's a pigtail. And then what you can do is you can run the bottom module as a sub, feed it an LFE channel with an external uh, rack mounted sub. So you have tremendous flexibility here and it's a, really a tremendous value with what you get for a reference speaker. So that's a little bit of insight into the RBH SVTR. So if you like the content on this channel, be sure to visit our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. Don't forget, keep listening. Let's go!